Hello, welcome to this tutorial. We are going to be looking at WebSockets today. So, what are WebSockets? What are we doing here? Why am I watching this tutorial? Or why am I creating this tutorial? Well, I want to show you how you can create a chat room. Now, you may think, oh God, how am I going to do this? There's probably networking involved. I've got to do with client, server. Hold up, hold up. It's not that hard. Now, what we're going to be using we're simply going to be using this package. It's the WS package, which is basically a node.js WebSocket library, as it says here. So it says here, simple to use, blazing fast, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that sounds good. So when going through this, I thought, yeah, this works pretty well. It looks simple. Um, so I thought, yeah, you know what? Let's test this out. Can we create a chat room? Um, so where do we begin? Well. Firstly, we're going to have to install this. So depending on what you're using, whether that be Yarn, NPM, go ahead and um, I think this is called WS. Uh, yeah, so just go ahead and do Yarn install WS. I think I may have it installed. Oops, Yarn add. Been working in NPM mode today, so I always get that mixed up. Anyhow, now we've got that. We, let's have a look at the package.json. So we have this package.json, we don't need that script. Basically, this is what your package.json should look like. It's just a standard one. We have dependencies. Oh, you need express. So if you haven't installed it, I've got it installed here. Just do yarn add express. So there we are. These are the two packages you need and that's it. Uh, jobs are good. In. So for now, let's get rid of the terminal. We're gonna have two files, a package.json. That's, well, it's a file, but it's not. <laughs> the main files index.html server.js. So, what we're going to do, let's just jump right in. Right now, let's just do const express. If you haven't used express, it basically just gives you. Do we need express here? Um, you know what? I don't even think we need express. So, let's just do websocket require ws. Um, oh, I think we may need express. Let's just see. Uh, did they use it in the tutorial here, Express? Ah, oh, uses Express session. Yeah, we don't need Express. Um, so yeah, this is, I briefly looked at this and I know it's um, held in high regard in terms of handling WebSockets. So let's just go ahead and do const, uh, actually no, let's just do const WWS, WSS, and that'll be web server socket. And we'll do new web socket dot server. And then we'll pass in server. We do need, actually, we do need another here out of the box, which is HTTP. Um, and that comes standard in Node. We can just grab that. That's cool. Oops, what am I doing here? Um, next, so just, yeah, copy this. This is exactly what you need. Um, so, yeah, I think we'll look good. We've got uh, two packages installed. We've got a server. Um, so next, let's get the server running actually. So just check, take a look in package.json, start your server. You can just do yarn start and it's gonna hit the script and it's just gonna basically do node server.js. Perfect, that don't work. Um, <laughs> okay, what did we call the server? Um, oh, no, I brought this in, but I never did anything with it. That's a bit silly. So yeah, let's call this server, uh, HTTP.create server. And then actually we may need express. Yeah, I think we do need express. Uh, express equals require express. Okay, that looks good to me. And of course, if you're using express, we have to expose it and give it a part. So I'm just gonna say, um, that looks good. Um, <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, now we've initialized this, we can go ahead and start using it. So we'll say, Get rid of that terminal. We'll say WWS on connection. And then let's do function, we'll call that connection. And I'm gonna give it a name because it makes it easier to debug if anything goes wrong. And having not used this package much, um, I want, well, I want something there in case I have to debug it. So what we're working with here, we have uh, WSS, so we have a WebSocket server. Now I want to get the WS, so be very careful here because these look exactly the same apart from that's got an extra S. Now this function here, I want to use the WS that gets returned, so I'm going to say WS on message. Now the difference here, the prime difference is 
uh, we have the WebSocket, we've set up the server, we've initialized this to WSS. On the connection of that, we want to pull out the WS, which is basically the WebSocket. So we're going to say on the WebSocket connection, then on a WebSocket message for an individual client, client being users connecting. So we'll call this incoming, and we've got some incoming data. Now this is the tricky bit. We want to get all the clients. Clients again, all the users connecting. So all the users who hit this page will have a separate session. Um, and we can do this, and you can encrypt this, but I'm just gonna show you the basics, how you get started. If you wanna go on and encrypt that, that's, that's, that's great. And then do for each. And we'll just say function for each client. Uh, I'm just gonna say if client is not equal to WS, and you know what, let's pull this over a bit, that'll be easier. And client dot ready state is equal to come on websocket dot open. Then I want to send them some data. That data that's going to get sent is, for example, if I'm in the chat room and I send that data, it's going to go to the other client who also is uh, listening. And it it's a bit confusing. Websockets can be confusing, but this should, I believe listen for clients connecting. So we have the port 6969, then we'll just say function. Um, let's just console.log, um, console.log. Let's say server is, uh, no, I want these. Server is listening on port. Okay, round two, let's see if this works. Yarn start. Oh, server's listening. That is good. Okay, so now we have to go to the index.html and figure out how we can send messages. Unfortunately, I can't help you with that because I have no idea how to do it. So I'm going to end the video right here. Um, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let me show you how to do this. Uh, real time messaging. Oh, I wish I had hot reloading. I'm going to have to refresh back in the old days. And we'll say pre messages. Uh, I just want to give it a height, a style, say 400, overflow, hidden, uh, no, let's scroll. Um, so that there, the messages is where the messages are going to get dropped into. Now I want an input, so input type text, so I want to be able to send messages, call this message, you know what, I want to make this bigger again, I can barely see it. Uh, I'll call it message box and I'll say placeholder, type your message here. Um, probably best styling it, so I'll say display block width 100% of the page, margin bottom of course, and then pad in 10 so I can type in there without having a squint. So we need a button to send, which says send uh, title, send message. Uh, style again, width 100, height uh, 30. And then we'll say send message. Okay, okay, I see ya. Um, and now we need a script. Back in the old school days here with no React, nothing. So we're gonna create a function and it's gonna be in a, um, what sort of function we're gonna do here? Let's do an immediately invoked function because I want this to run immediately. So I'm gonna wrap it like so, and then I'm going to invoke it here immediately. So as soon as this page comes, I'm, I've got a function and I'm going to invoke it immediately. These little bad boys here are just saying, go ahead, do your job immediately. Each time, well, anytime you, you know, call these on a function, uh, so whether it be const something, actually, let's, uh, let's remove this. Oops, no, wrong way. Uh, so anything, so this is being invoked as a function. This is not. You call a function by passing these. If you didn't know that um, uh, terminology, I guess, invocation, uh, it's just one of those things. Um, you'll, you'll pick it up. So anyways, let's select this stuff up here now. So we do document.querySelector. Uh, send, duplicate that. Um, here we need the messages because we want to pre we want to put the messages in uh, message box is that what I called it yep okay here we want to do messages and then we have to initialize WS so 
we can just open a standard browser WebSocket here, which is really nice. Now I'm not too sure if this is supported across the board, but I'm sure you can um, use something like Babel to uh, fix that if not. So function, we want to show the message, pass a message in, I'll say messages dot text content equals, no, nope, not equals. Um, let's see, back, um, I've been on a Windows machine recently, I cannot type on a Mac anymore. So sad. Oh, there we are. So, uh, let's just say messages dot scroll top equals messages dot scroll height message box dot value want to clear that out eventually once we send it and then let's initialize this so we'll just create another function called init if we have ws which is a web socket and we're going to say ws um on error we're just going to say ws dot on open equals ws dot on close not wes uh on close equals null and then we'll just close it um let's see so that's what we need as the base um as you can see it's not like standard javascript well it's standard javascript but it's more complex than just doing um some of the stuff you see when you're dealing with web sockets it's very tedious and if the, the connection closes you have to set something like an interval to make sure you reopen the connection it, it's really tedious actually but it's really nice on the other hand um so let's initialize a WebSocket and we want to say WS as a WebSocket and 6969 because that's where our server's running. And we're going to say on open. Uh, a lot of this is in the docu documentation for the uh, package we're using. So uh, I would recommend reading that. I had a quick uh, read through, maybe about 20 minutes before doing this. Um, and it's helped me pick this up. Uh, connection opened. Perfect. And then we'll say w dot on message equals let's just structure out data. And then we'll just pass that immediately to show message. And then we can do on close. So if the WebSocket closes, let's just go ahead and do null. Okay, so it's looking okay. Uh, but how do we send a message? That is the million dollar question. So we're doing on click, on click, then we'll say a function. Let's just pull that down so you can see this up a bit better. Okay, so on click function. Let's do if there's no WebSocket. Um, let's we'll say show message, no WebSocket connection, surface, and just return else well not an else you can just basically run through and say message box dot value and then we want to show the message in the box which is message message box dot value again so that's going to send the message and that's going to put it into the box because we want you know the history of what's going on and then of course this is going to run immediately but we have to initialize our init so we'll grab that here come down right to the bottom and if you get, I can imagine this is um, a fairly fast tutorial. So if you do get stuck, uh, the code's in the um, repo below. Also, please, please follow me on Twitter and do subscribe. It really helps and it motivates me to do more of these videos. Um, and just let me know what you want to see actually in terms of uh, videos being created. Nevertheless, this could be a bit confusing. Uh, the code is there for you. And I'd recommend just reading through and then reading documentation and it'll clear things up. But this is the basics of how to set up a WebSocket. So now we've gone ahead, created all this. There's only a few lines of code, right? Let's test it. So we've got some magic going on here. Let's take a look what's going on in the server. Hey, you know what? Let's make this bigger. Hey. Okay, that seems to have worked. Um, let's do another one there. Another one there. So we've got three connections now. So I'll put that one. Um, actually, let's put that one there. Put this one here. And now you can see we've got three connections to the WebSocket. So 
this one I'll refresh. Hello. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. I work. There you are, you've got chat room going. Chat, 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 chat. Perfect. Is it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, kind of like MSN, right? Um, how long till the WebSocket dies? I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. You don't have the history there, but you can store the history um, maybe on the server. There's no authentication, but that's pretty much it in terms of, um, I guess, creating a server that can handle this. And this is pretty much the code. I don't know how many lines were on because I don't have the line numbers on my editor. Um, at some point, I probably should put them back on. Um, but yeah, that's it for the front end. Sends a message over to the server. The server then handles the WebSocket. So you just need Express and the WebSocket package. Set up, create a server, exactly how you do in Express. Initialize a WebSocket server, check for a connection, check for a message, and then relay that message back to all the clients. But yeah, pretty cool, right? Real-time messaging. Maybe you can extend this off my Tinder video. Um, someone did ask this actually in the Discord, so I'm gonna forward this on to um, that person today, hopefully. Uh, it was in the pipeline, I just never got around to it, but this is uh, real-time messaging in standard JavaScript and using the WebSocket package. So hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you learned something. I know I went fairly fast, but the repo is in the description. Please subscribe, like the video, drop a comment, do all the YouTube stuff, whatever that is, and I shall see you in the next video.